Oh, time already? Yes. Ah, hello, welcome. My name is Basil Bork. Um, this talk is going to be uh, hopefully mind expanding uh, and explain how date time stuff works in general. Uh, the, basically, the key concepts to understand date time handling as programmers and DBAs. Um, and my name is Basil Bork, and uh, I am a developer, not a full time DBA type guy. I'm a software developer, but I've always worked with database backed apps. So uh, I love to, uh, I'm very glad I had discovered Postmates uh, a few years ago and use it more and more now in my own work. Uh, and as far as my own work, I'm interested in doing micro startups. If anybody has uh, business ideas, come and talk to me um, about very small little companies. Uh, this, um, I love this quote, time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. Because we know all that song, well, if you're old enough to grow up in the 70s, you know the song by heart. Um, but I like this because the whole idea of daytime handling is amazingly slippery. Trying to get a hold of the concepts, thinking you understand it. Basically, your uh, intuitive understanding that we have a daytime that we use every day, right, to live, is totally counterproductive to being a programmer or DBA. It's like, that is what, uh, uh, you have to unlearn your, con your unconscious understanding of daytime. You need to unlearn that to really do things right. Uh, and it's why people end up in these horrible holes pulling their hair out, dealing with date time uh, in their data and their apps. Uh, so what I'm going to talk about today is from the perspective of business-oriented apps. So not engineering or science uh, or history. Those are very different fields that, need, uh, that have different issues. And I'm also going to talk Western, uh, you know, Europe, US type uh, calendars. Specifically defined by ISO standard um, uh, is what, oh, well, I'll get to that in a moment. Because I'm going to be talking, oddly, I'm going to be talking about Java today, but only because Java has the industry leading libraries for handling date time. So I'm going to cover the basic classes that are in this library, not because none of you may be Java programmers, I don't care, but the concepts, this one library is so well defined uh, and designed that it will lay out the concepts for us to then uh, go back and map the data types that are in Postgres back onto those types. So it's my little experiment with you to see if it uh, is a good way to cover the different ideas involved in date time stuff. Uh, to start out uh, the very basics, here's our timeline. We got to the left is past, forward, future, and there's a spot where we are now. This may seem silly and simplistic, but I swear to God, there are times when I pulled my hair out trying to deal with date time stuff in my apps, and I have to take a deep breath. It's also most meditative to realize there's only one real timeline. Sometimes you swear time is morphing because you've screwed up your time zones and adjustments, and you have to realize, no, there are not French time and Chinese time. They're all the same, right? We all share the same timeline. And so I will talk about coming back to this timeline uh, a few times. So how do we define now? Well, what you have to do is to pick a point, an arbitrary point in time as a reference, and we call that the epoch, or epoch, or however you want to pronounce it. Um, the, uh, we pick that point, and we say negative numbers to the left is an amount of time in the past, uh, and the, to the right, positive numbers are after that point. So then the next question is, well, what epoch are we going to pick? So, um, how many people here know which one's the right epoch out of here? It's our little puzzler. Does anybody know the right one? I'll take a guess. You, to, you, maybe? Okay. Well, what do you think? Tell me. 1970. 1970. Okay. You are wrong. <laughs> and you are right. All of these are epochs used by different software systems. Promin prominent software systems. Probably the most popular might be this one because it's used by Lotus 123 and Microsoft Excel for Windows at least. The Mac one did a different one. Just Actually it isn't. It's 1970 for um, Excel. It's now. Uh, it is now. Oh Hasn't it is now? It oh has great, they changed the last it? Three generations. Oh my god. Oh my god. So I think of the billions of documents out there. Um, and like I said, the Mac version of Excel did its own thing. So it's not the first time they've changed. No, 
Um, well, they, I think they decided that they were getting further and further out of the mainstream, so when they changed the file format, uh -huh. Back in about three generations. And hopefully, they're doing automatic conversions. But yes, yeah. they're, they're, but if you're reading those, are going to be wrong. Or have well, there are plugins, and they've got yeah. embedded in there the version of the of the format oh of the database, and so it, the new ones will yes. all read the old ones. Well, all but of yeah. these are used by super systems. I mean, there's actually I got a link uh, to Wikipedia. There's a list of these. This is uh, two dozen. Um, these are just the like major major systems. For example, Apple uses this, so that might be, there's a billion iOS devices and Macs out there, so it might be that one. And yes, this one is common in the Unix world. So people that are Unix oriented, they think that there's Unix time. It turns out that's not actually, there's nothing written down exactly um, uh, as to exactly what Unix time means. But generally it means the 1st of January, 1970, uh, in UTC. I UTC ask, is. What was the 1967 one? I don't remember. I don't know. I don't remember these. But like I said, we're not talking obscure. Major uh, computer systems use these. So yeah, look, it's really interesting to look up that Wikipedia article. Uh, <clears throat> so you can Google Epoch reference in Google uh, in Wikipedia. So the next question is, a count of what? What are we counting, positive or negative, from 1970? Because uh, yes, we are going to. Java uses uh, 1970. Although Postgres uses January 2000. There's a little blue elephant. <clears throat> but in Java, use 1970. But that's really not the point here. The point is that we need to have a count from whatever reference you're using. So again, POSIX does define specifically as a subset of Unix world uh, whole seconds, uh, which off topic, but you may have heard of this, besides Y2K, there's a Y2038 problem, I think, 30-something 30, 30 problem, because these numbers in a 32-bit number, I think, are going to poop out or something. Um, so yeah, there's a whole other calamity uh, headed for us in the next few decades. Um, so uh, old Java classes use milliseconds, a count of milliseconds since 1970. Postgres is using my, uh, microseconds, so they're six digits. Uh, for microseconds in the fractional decimal, and the new uh, so, so framework. It's actually it's actually saved in seconds then. No, this is in Postgres. Yeah. You get uh, up to uh, microseconds in terms of the, so the count. Good. Yeah, but that ba basically that is it, the unit one is one second then in Postgres. And a microsecond is... You don't care because internally, this is what we're talking about internally, we don't really care about how they store it. But yes, it's the, conceptually, it's a count of microseconds since the year 2000. Posters. But I'm pointing out that the scale is different, different systems. This is a major problem. It's like programmers, they export, you know, DEA guy exports uh, microseconds out the data. And then the programmer, she goes in there and does an import with the old legacy classes. She's got three digits. He had six digits of fraction. Now she exports and does a comparison back to the database. They don't match. And we have it actually happening all the time between the two of us. Uh, oh, really? Two things in microseconds. Yes. And she does analysis. Yes, yeah. So, so now in uh, mo really more modern systems, um, uh, like the Java time is what I'm going to talk about today. Again, I'm not pushing that, but the concepts are so clear here. Um, and they use nanoseconds. But even here, you can see that all of these are very common in different um, app environments. So what's a nanosecond? Anybody know who that is? Oh, I tell you, Grace Hopper, Admiral Grace Hopper, one of the inventors of the computing industry. So she invented, um, basically invented COBOL. She invented the concept of a high-level language compiler. Uh, and she may have invented the term bug, because uh, she worked in the days when they actually had the tubes and the moth flew in. and. She's not sure who came up with the word moth, uh, uh, bug, but um, the moth was true, she swore. So she is handing David Letterman on TV a nanosecond, which is a piece of wire about a foot long. And that's the distance that light travels in a nanosecond. And she did that because in, in her later years, she taught in the Naval uh, Academies. And she was trying to teach um, efficiency. In her day, you know, computers were so limited that efficiency was so paramount. So she liked to tell them, you know, you don't want to waste a single nanosecond. So, um, um, 
So the count from where, um, time, uh, um, You'll hear the term solar time, and basically what it means is, I mean, how did cavemen keep track of time, right? There's only one way. When the, when the sun's right overhead, that's noon, and everything else is up for grabs. So that's basically solar time is wherever you're standing at noon, the sun's going to be right overhead. Well, of course, what that meant is every little town to the east or the west is, has noon and a little bit later and a little bit earlier. So what happened is that we standardized times... Um, as I'm sure you've heard of with the railway, railroads didn't start it, but they really made it happen uh, big time. Uh, it's to standardize these big swath of, of land uh, to the east and the west and call that one time zone. Um, um, so then from where? Well, you've probably seen these kind of terms used before. And the answer from where is uh, GMT and UTC, uh, basically, from the point of writing business apps, they're the same thing. There's a slight technical difference, but again, unless you're in science, uh, you really don't care. So I will say UTC, and GMT is an interchangeable term for the most part. Um, Z at the end, or you see Z uh, at the end stands for, uh, pronounced Zulu, comes from, I think, military and some other uh, traditions of time zones, and it means UTC. So that all three of those. These other ones, PDT, EST, these are not time zones. One of my biggest tips to you right now is do not use these things. These are, I don't know where they exactly came from, but they're pseudo fake time zones. Um, real time zones are named with a continent and a region with a slash. Europe slash Paris, um, America slash Montreal. Those are real time zones. There's recorded, there's history as to what the what the changes were made over time in that area. So this is one of the biggest mistakes. Uh, all these do is give you a clue that it's Pacific. It's daylight, so uh, the daylight, if they use daylight savings in that area, it kicks in. And of course, it doesn't mean uh, every, well, for one thing, these are not standardized. CST is Central Standard Time in the US. It's also China Standard Time. IST is India Standard Time and Irish Standard Time. So they're not even unique. They're not standardized. Um, that is like probably the most practical thing I'll tell you today is don't use those things. Um, there is a leap second involved. Again, uh, as a business app developer, you don't care. I used to like strain my brain trying to understand this, but then I realized the point is that the Earth the rotation is slowing down a little bit, and it doesn't quite fit 24-hour day. So we get these every about a year, year and a half to two years roughly. It's not predictable. There's a bunch of scientists that declare a sleep second. What they're trying to do is look at the astronomical positioning of the Earth and calculate if our clocks need to adjust. Um, the whole point, though, is to make it fit into our calendar. So the whole point of the leap second is that we don't care. We want to, we want to pretend it didn't happen, and we're just slowing down our clocks. One technical possibility, though, to be aware of is that, it, that 60, instead of 59 in the second position, 60 or 61 is technically accurate. The scientists reserve the right to do one second or two. Um, right now, they've only ever done one, and it's positive. They reserve the right to go backward, but it's never happened. Um, um, so what Google does, apparently, is the last 1,000 minutes of the day is take a millisecond. They slow. They don't do it as a whole second. They do a second every minute. I mean, a millisecond every minute. So it, they call it a smear, I think. Um, but again, as an app developer, don't even worry about it. Uh, yes, my other major uh, practical point is as a DBA or a programmer, when you put your hat on to go to work, forget about your own local time zone. That, again, is probably the biggest practical thing for programming is you forget your own local. If you go translating in and out of Seattle time to whatever other time zones you may have to deal with, uh, you will drive yourself nuts. It's like trying to learn a language by constantly translating. You know, there's a point where you have to give up and let go. So UTC is what you should use. That should be your default. And in fact, you should think of UTC as the one true time. And all the time zones are, are variations on that theme. Uh, oh, there's the green line. Uh, oh, the next one. I've got the green line here for offset from UTC. So as we talk about that the Greenwich Mean Time is here, um, 
The concept I'm trying to teach you right here is that this is not time zones. Offset from UTC is a term that means a number of hours, a number of minutes, and a number of seconds. That's all it means, is a number of hours, minutes, and seconds. So these are not zones per se. Uh, so it's really good to separate the concept of what's an offset and what's a zone. An offset is we, like right now, with daylight savings, we're seven hours behind, I believe, UTC. Um, our time zone currently, on this date, has an offset. The, the distinction I'm making is that a zone is a definition of the changes in the offset that people in a certain region use in the past and the present and the future. So a time zone is the changes past, present, and future used by people in a certain region in their offset. I don't know if that makes sense or not. Um, what I'm saying is like, uh, you know, uh, half of this year we're gonna be eight hours behind UTC, half the year we're gonna be seven hours behind. So people see a minus seven and they think that that's time zone. And so I do, I spend way too much time on Stack Overflow answering questions on date time. So as soon as you see minus seven and I don't know how to handle this time zone, bingo, I know their problem right away. They, they have not made that differentiation between minus seven usually because it's parochial, they're thinking their own time zone and they get confused. So for example, Arizona doesn't operate on, um, they don't adopt daylight savings time. There's a little town, I believe, in the bottom of Alaska that doesn't uh, take. Uh, uh, Probably the only two sensible places in the US. Yes, yeah. thank you, that is my point. If you start looking into what is daylight savings, it is, remember as a kid learning that the emperor with no clothes, it is exactly, there is no logical reason to have daylight savings. It is complete nonsense. Look into the history of it. There's no, they now try to do studies that retroactively justify it, but they don't. No. The only proven studies are that heart, heart attacks go up, traffic wrecks go up. There's a whole bunch of stuff for making people change their. Anybody who's yeah. ever tried to reset the routine of a two-year-old every time. Oh, there, there, you there you go, there you go. So yeah, here's the exactly it was be fed in the morning. Oh yeah, the absurdity is, imagine, let's pass a law, let's all get together, we're going to pass a law that tells people to get out of their bed earlier on some days and later on other days. Everybody would laugh at it, but that's what daylight savings time is. But I used to be very annoyed by daylight savings because I thought it caused so much trouble. I don't mind it as much now because there's a lot of other anomalies in the time, the way we handle daytime, besides daylight savings. And uh, I've almost grown to like daylight savings because it forces programmers and, and uh, DBAs to think about these issues um, because they happen in so many places, you know, twice a year. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, Venezuela, three years ago, um, changed it by 15 minutes. They changed their, their time zone definition. Uh, Turkey, two years ago, decided to stay on daylight savings permanently. And how much time, how much for, for warning do they give? About six weeks. It's just a matter of weeks. So that's another practical thing I'm going to teach you is um, politicians love to mess with the time zone definitions and the daylight savings and all these anomalies. Um, these changes happen a lot. They're very much more common than you would think. If you have to deal with, I mean, even my lifetime, U.S. has changed, what, three times? At least three times has changed daylight saving dates. Um, Russia, in the last several years, uh, has gone on daylight, off daylight, back on, decided to stay off but behind, and then they decided to stay on but ahead. Uh, and I'm talking like just several, like, I don't know what, six, eight years, something like that. So um, this stuff changes a lot. So, but back to this point, the offset is just a number of hours, minutes, and seconds. So a time zone is a collection, it's the history recording of uh, when did that offset change for that, the people in that region. Uh, yeah, there's some examples. Seattle is eight or seven hours behind. This plus or minus, by the way, generally nowadays in modern times, this means, this is not a formula, it's not algebraic. So uh, some people misread this. See over here is an example. We have a date of the first, the 23rd of January at 4 a.m. minus eight. Some people uh, confuse this 
uh, and some old protocols did it that way. But the modern way is, this means minus eight means that we are behind UTC minus eight hours behind. So is that value then, that, that 4 a.m. value eight hours behind? Yes, so here's, the, here's your math. If you want to get to UTC, flip the sign. So we need to add eight hours. Flip it and add eight hours. Four plus eight is 12, so it's new UTC. Okay, so that's given with local time and then the offset. Yes, the exactly. When you see this, if you don't, well, we'll talk about that in a minute. So yes, this means 4 a.m. Uh, some place. Again, this is, this is an offset, not a zone. So we don't know where. It might be Seattle, it might be somewhere else. Um, and what's important, well, um, so yes, this is eight hours behind that four, uh, or this 4 a.m. is eight hours behind UTC. But again, I want to mention, you really need to know your data, where you're getting it from, because there are some old protocols or traditions that people had where this was the opposite. So you need to understand when you get data, you know, where it comes from uh, and what their meaning was. Although this is pretty common nowadays. Um, The biggest little practical tip I'll give you is uh, uh, when you use offsets, put in the padding zero in front of the hour and um, uh, add the minutes, even if it's zero, and put a colon, colon zero. It's, uh, there's a standard I'm going to talk about that allows to not have the uh, colon. I'm just telling you, practically speaking, there are a lot, of, I have run into this and other people run into this, where there's libraries that don't expect alternate variations on that. So um, the other thing is that this is very readable. When I see a plus or minus and a colon, I know that's an offset. So as I say, the continent region is our names. And uh, ah, so it's totally useful. Wikipedia has a page with a list of the TZ uh, names. These used to be in a database called Olsen. You probably heard of the Olsen database. Uh, he was a guy, a volunteer, who did this. That blows my mind that this stuff was not written down. One guy, like, decades ago, started trying to track the time, the changes in the offsets for every zone. It was not officially recorded anywhere. There's like no UN agency or something that does this. So this one guy, Olson, was doing it. Long story short, he turned it over to the IANA, whatever, the Internet Authority, something. They track, they now maintain this list. Oh, and by the way, it only goes back to about 1970. Before, there is data for before 70, 1970, but it's not necessarily accurate because so much has been lost in history. Um, uh, so strings, uh, we do not, you want to, uh, this is ambiguous, right? We don't know what day, month, or year that is. You can read it as any number of different dates. Um, the another big concept that people have is um, confusing the text representing with the date time object itself. So, um, um, uh, when you're doing programming or in, in Postgres, people see this content coming out, the text being generated, and they think that's the value that's being stored, and it's not. So, databases uh, and like Java or other environments, they internally represent it, who knows how, you don't care, but it's not the text. So you have to think of text as input to an internal value and then output from that internal value. And ISO 8601 is this ambiguous, unambiguous format that you should be using for strings, which by the way, is almost like the SQL format. Uh, obviously you can use SQL, but the difference is uh, SQL standard doesn't use a T in the middle, they put a space. Um, the, the whole industry has ignored all these problems. Um, um, this doesn't matter for us right now. Uh, so, the core classes that I'm talking about in um, Java that handle these concepts, the instant class is a moment in time in UTC, always in UTC. Uh, offset date time is a moment on the timeline uh, but then it's been adjusted, you know, plus or minus some number of hours. Zone date time is, um, actually has a zone applied to it. So this has nothing but a plus eight hours or minus seven hours. This has the actual name, that continent slash uh, region name. 
So the point, the difference here is, is that if you want to move into the future from this date, if you want to add three months or go back six months, uh, you may not get the right time of day if you're only using this offset. Because the zone would have known, well, six months from now, they're going to be off daylight savings. So three, you know, four in the morning is really going to be three in the morning. That's the difference you're getting. Is with the zone, you're going to get those adjustments made for you. Without, with just the offset, you can't, there's, they don't know the rules. That's what the, the zone definition is having those rules. Um, so we talked about the Olson database, and there's a lot of these changes being made all the time. That also means this TZ data is, there's a copy, it's a, a data file that's in Postgres. It, there's also a copy in your operating system. There's also another copy in your Java environment, if you're using Java or similar environment. This means that you need to keep this up to date. If you care about a region that has had changes in their time zone definition, you need to update this TZ data file. Um, Java has a little utility that you can run to, to insert if, uh, if there's been a very recent change. Otherwise, like updates to Java have it, updates to Postgres have it. But similarly, if you're using an older version of Postgres and you know that there's a zone change that you care about, like you may not care about Turkey, but you might care about Mexico or something, then you need to get your fresh TZ data. Uh, So we kind of already talked about this, the offsets. Um, the, um, here is an example where in Java there's a class just for the offset versus the zone. So here we have uh, America Montreal versus five and a half hours. And by the way, minutes, it's not always whole hours. Like India is five and a half hours behind us. And there's other variations too. Oh, my point here is, these, this is where people get confused, is that all three of these represent the very same moment in this example. So 123, uh, yeah, 123, yep. So 1 a.m., 23 minutes after. In India, that is five and a half hours difference. So it's 6.53. And in Montreal, it's the opposite direction. So, and it's a different date. So, the concept here, this is what I meant about going back to the timeline, is to realize there's only one moment. And again, when you get confused, you're thinking UTC. All three of these represent the same point on that timeline. So if I keep talking about being on the timeline, does not imply there's something about being off the timeline? And yes, there are types uh, when we are not on the timeline. The, in Java, the classes are called local date, local time, and local date time. So it's date only, time only, and then the date plus the time. So these three are not on the timeline, which means these local date time is not a moment. And we're going to see this in Postgres. It's the same concept. So this is a moment on the timeline. These are not a moment. So what the heck is, what is, what is that uh, used for? Um, well, um, one possible meaning is that we don't know the time zone, and that's why we, are, we don't have any offset or time zone. That's a bad situation. You have bad data. If you have a date and a time and you don't know the time zone, that's probably one of the most common problems because it's implied. Whoever gave you the data had in their head that this was Seattle time or this was UTC time, but if you don't know, again, know the source of your data, you have to know that and then apply it, which uh, should never be done. It's like, you know, all programmers and DBAs really should be exporting data with the offset and the zone all the time, if that's what you intended. So what, what else would you intend, if not that? Well, for example, um, our company has a policy that we're going to take lunch at noon. But we have factories in Delhi, Detroit, and Dusseldorf. So what does that mean, noon? It's not the same moment in time. It means that in Delhi, their noon is, uh, comes sooner than the one in Dusseldorf, and Detroit comes last. Those are three different moments in time when we say noon. So how do you represent next Thursday at 12 noon in any of those cities? Well, you do it as the local date time, the one without a zone, the unzoned value. And this is a key concept. So.
I want to make sure you understand that. So to understand it, let's talk about Santa. That's another time you're going to do. If you're an elf in the logistics department and you have to map out Santa's route, it's kind of funny when I looked up pictures of Santa, they all show him pointing this way, which is wrong. He actually, I think it's going to be read left to right, so they always show the reindeer going that way. I had to flip this photo because Santa starts in the Christmas, well, more the Christmas Islands, now it's Kiribati, and has to move. This is a plus 14 hours. By the way, there's time zones range, not 24 hours. They range 26 hours. There's plus 14. I think these guys moved recently. They wanted to stay as the earliest time on the planet. I think they did around Y2K or something. So they want to, um, Christmas starts here first, right? The moment of midnight, after midnight, the first moment on the 25th of December starts here. Then they're going to move to New Zealand. Then they're going to move to Australia. Then they're going to move to Asia. Because there's a midnight here, then a midnight here, then a midnight here. So again, if you want to represent, if, you're, uh, if you want to tell all these people, right, when is Santa going to show up? Well, it's going to be on midnight 25. Well, that's an unzoned date time. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned elsewhere. The other reason to use this is if you are booking things out farther than a politician might change their time zones. And as I said, they often do it with only several weeks. So if you're doing a medical appointment for a year from now, you probably don't want that to be a moment on the timeline being, you know, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Because if they change, that might be 2, a, 2 in the afternoon if during several months later the politicians change the rules. So that's another use for low, uh, unzoned values, is when you're booking future appointments farther out than you think the politicians. Does that make sense? It's, uh, is there a standard way to represent the notion of local time? Yeah, we get to, we're going to wrap this back around to the postgres types. That, that's what we're going to do right here. SQL standard de defines some types. Um, uh, the problem is the standard barely touches on this stuff. So they kind of defined these types and walked away. They didn't define much behavior or anything else about them. So databases really radically have different behaviors about the types and the behaviors about how they work. So you really, every database, this is probably the most tricky, problematic porting issue is date time stuff. You really need to study every database you're going to use. Uh, Fortune Postgres, one of the best, they have uh, one of the best supports for date time. So as far as the standard is concerned, Postgres follows this. Postgres generally tries to follow the standard really closely. So a date, date type in SQL standard is date. Oracle, not. Oracle has, it's a date time value. Um, so some of these names, not, a lot of the databases have old propri proprietary types that they invented before the SQL standard got to this. Some of them did create their own types because they want a special feature or they think it's a good idea. So you really, again, have to study the docs to understand. This really confused me at first when I looked at Oracle docs. So, but in the standard, the date is a date only. A time, time without time zone is the formal name. You can shorten it to time. I would recommend you keep in the habit of using the full name. It's a little annoying, but it really uh, makes it clear. Because when you see timestamp, it's really confusing, I think to understand which one of these types. I mean, it's really easy for a DBA or programmer to get that mixed up, and a world of difference. So the ones we talked about without timestamp, so the ones that you would use for Christmas this year, we would use the local timestamp without time zone. If you want to know when Santa's going to show up in New Zealand, then you would use timestamp with time zone. Uh, and there is no zone date only because it doesn't really make sense. So uh, Postgres types um, uh, match up, except Postgres added a, a proprietary timestamp Z as a short abbreviation of timestamp with time zone. Oh, and the dots, if you read them, mention that time with time zone really doesn't make sense that it was put in, although this fellow says he's going to educate me about that. that there is some uses uh, for time with time zone. Um, I've read some things that, I don't know, when you educate me, we'll figure it out. But anyway, the, the docs in the, in the Postgres say, you know, we put this type in, but we don't really think anybody's going to use it. They put it in because it's required by the standard. So 
Um, here's where it gets tricky putting stuff into uh, Postgres. Because what does it mean with and without time zone? Again, this is, I'm only talking Postgres. Other databases do this differently. Postgres says, when you give me input like this that has zone, uh, a zone or offset information, it, I think of with time zone as meaning with respect for time zone. It does not actually store the time zone. What it does is respect the time zone, adjust it into UTC, and then store it. If you have a without time zone type, then what it does is whether, you, whether or not you included an offset or a time zone, it ignores it. So it only takes the sort of literal 1800 and sticks it in. So you can see how this can be really confusing if you don't understand that what this really means, this without time zone. And again, when you get this value back out, you are not going to get the Indian time. You're going to get a UTC value. But here's the catch. A lot of the tools you use, the command line tools, the query tools, they will apply a time zone on the fly which I think is a horrible anti-feature because they're basically injecting their opinion about how they think you should see this. But for a novice at least, what happens is they get, they start to understand this is supposed to be UTC, but then when they do a query, they get back at Seattle Pacific time. It's like, what is that? Well, no, it was not stored in Seattle Pacific time. It was stored in UTC, but your tool may have on the way out. That's why I was saying don't, that you know that the string coming out is not the value that was in here. It was being generated by your tool, apply the time zone, and change the, what looked like the value. It's still the same moment, but it looks different. So this is where I wanted to overlay the Postgres and the Java is, uh, in Java has what I think is very sensible. They have a class for, the, for having the time zone versus a class for having the offset. We don't have either one of those in Postgres or the standard. So what we have is um, timestamp with uh, time zone. I've abbreviated here. Um, and that's the instant class. Again, UTC is your friend. You should, the, the, another practical tip is always think in UTC uh, by default. You know, if you don't have a, a good reason to move off of UTC, don't. And what do I mean by good reason? Well, one, it basically it's either business logic so there's something particular, but more common, it's user interface, right? You want to report the daytime to your user. Well, if they're sitting in New York, they probably want New York time. Um, little aside, how do you know what zone they want to see it in? Well, then you can sometimes look for a default zone in various systems, like a web browser. Um, but if you really want to be accurate, if it's really crucial, you should be con your app should confirm with your user. That's another power tip is um, the defaults Defaults is where people go wrong in all of this, and one of them is the user interface. They may be in New York, but they might be flying in and leaving. They might be in Chicago time in their mind. So you really, good software really should be confirming the time zone intended. So, but in the back side, in the database side, not the presentation side, use UTC almost always. Um, so again, we have timestamp without time zone maps to this one. This was our Santa Claus all over the world one. Um, this time uh, without zone is like the regular time, time of day, uh, and our date for date only. This is probably the core of everything. Is there any questions about, is this making sense? I'm probably also running out of time, but that's why I want to emphasize this, uh, that, that you should understand that Postgres does not have those two types, that zoned and offset only. It's only got instant, it's only got UTC with a time zone. This is our most common class that you're going to be using, the most common type in Postgres, that this is always UTC in your database. Uh, we're kind of out of time. I want to kind of do a pop quiz, um, but we're kind of out of time, so I think I'll skip it. I have the answers here, which data type you should be using for which kind of stuff. 
Birth date, you can use date only, which is really not accurate, except we almost never really care, right? It's like I was born in New Orleans, so you know the time of day when I was born is a different date. I don't know, unless you're doing the, the astrology stuff, then you know. But in business, we generally don't care. And so this is a subtlety you need to think about when you're designing apps. It's like date is kind of a wild card. For example, if it's something legal, you might not want to store it as just a date. Uh, you know, because when did this date start in Chicago versus in Paris? You know, something, if there's a legal importance there, the date may not be appropriate. Um, lunch appointment tomorrow is not far enough out that we're not going to get a change by our politicians, so we do time, time stamp with zone. Um, the daily pasturing of the cows, this is with the out, without the zone, because we're going to, in our app, have to apply, that's what I'm putting a note here, the app is going to need to apply a zone to this to figure out three weeks from now when are you going to milk the cows. It's going to be 3 p.m. apply the zone when that really means when is 3 p.m. three weeks from now. Maybe an hour off if daylight savings kicked in or, or the rules changed. Um, by the way, you can always ask me about these. Uh, uh, in the booth, if you want to come talk to me, I'd be curious to know if you have any arguments about with them later. But I better move on. Oh, the opening of election polls in the U.S. That's another one without zone because we're crossing all the zones. If it's 7 p.m. everywhere, you would just represent that as the unzoned date time. Uh, SQL standard keywords. Um, uh, first of all, it's kind of confusing because there's some keywords and there's some functions, and so the syntax can be different, but you might get some of the same effects. Um, so these, this slide might be useful in future reference because this is the standard ones. The docs are a little confusing about what's standard and what isn't. Um, so if you want to, you can stick with this uh, to um, get the current date or the current time. Uh, the other major concept in Postgres is when is now, what the current time is. It depends on if you're in a transaction or not. So uh, the standard ones that I just, this is kind of a valuable point. All of these standard ones are based on the transaction start time. So if you have a long running transaction, if you call this current timestamp over and over and over, you're going to get the same value during your transaction every time you call it. So um, there are some other ones that are not transact semi-colored boxes there. This one tells you the time, the moment when the statement started. But statements, a long complicated statement could take a while. This one, the clock timestamp, that's the actual current moment from the clock. This is the real, sort of the real current time. Does that make sense? And you, all these are valuable. It all depends on the context of what you're doing. Um, uh, da, 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 default. Oh, yes. So remember I said tools will add uh, their own opinion about what they think the time zone representation should be. So you need to know that in a SQL session, there is um, 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 what am I trying to say here? Oh. The, the different tools are different. These are different outputs I got from different tools. So it's kind of curious to me that, you know, this is IntelliJ as a, a, a programming environment for Java people. It has this, but in PG Admin 4, you get this when you do the exact same uh, result. Again, the text coming out is not what's in the database. Um, so as I said, there is a session setting for the time zone. So when you... Um, at, which I think is a bad idea. I think it should always be UTC unless you say otherwise, but it's not. They take, they try to, with best intentions, usually most tools like PG Admin, um, and actually this is in every Postgres connection, there's actually a session setting. Um, there's two syntaxes to change it. One of these is standard SQL, the set time zone, and then there's quotes, single quotes. Uh, and then set time zone two is, um, that's the regular Postgres specific for changing a setting in the session. So these have the same effect, but I want to point out that one is standard. What I would recommend again, UTC. It's like, when in doubt, just 
do your stuff like logging. Um, uh, and when you export data, when you exchange data, it should almost always be UTC, logging UTC, because uh, you can always get back to another what was Seattle time on that date time. Uh, uh, I don't know, let me see. Um, well, I just said that. I would recommend set your time zone to UTC. Uh, for database drivers, you've got to read your docs to figure out the way they behave. These um, drivers can have, even if there's a JDBC, just in Java, there's JDBC standard, but some of the drivers will act different. So what I recommend is that programmers um, or DBAs using tools practice, practice, practice. Do some cloning database and tables with values and see what you're getting in and out. Um, when you when you uh, make your calls, and uh, oh, this is just Java code. If you're not a Java programmer, I just since I've been talking about Java, this is the modern way. There's a modern way to exchange uh, date time values. Talk to me if you are into Java. Um, and that's it. There's our last slide. This is the takeaways. So we can kind of cover this and see if you have any questions. We're kind of over time, but we can talk for a few minutes. Um, super tricky stuff, date time handling, but once you get that distinction of being on the timeline or off the timeline, I think that alone is put you ahead. The other thing that puts you ahead is keeping track, thinking UTC. Uh, I literally recommend having two clocks, have a second clock on your desk that is in UTC. So that when you can look in log files and kind of see, oh, 3 a.m. was actually whatever. Um, although you kind of get that habit after a while, it gets a little easier. It's really weird at first to think of UTC, but I found after a while, it's like I kind of know that Seattle is 7 or 8 behind. So I can kind of, you know, estimate just by looking at 7 or 8. Um, uh, local does not mean local. I don't know if I really explained that. It's an odd term, but nobody's been able to come up with a better one. But usually in daytime handling, when people say local, they don't mean Seattle. They mean any locality, not a particular locality. And if you can figure out a better term, huh? Wherever the heck the person or the program is considering to be home at the time. Yeah, yeah. although, like I said, from what we've talked about, that's not what local means, because local means you don't know the time zone, yeah. or you mean any of them. Or you so, don't care. So, again, you need to, yeah, or you don't care, although that's really... I think that's bad thinking. I think that will get you into trouble. That is probably sort of like being in denial. Um, you really always care about time zone, and, and again, that problem is people think uh, parochial, their own little thing. You really need to get out of that mindset. You should always care about the time. When you get, uh, and time zones, I mean, when you get that data, you should always question, what does this mean? If I get strings like that with minus seven, it's like, um, um, you know, what were they thinking, or if there was no offset at all? Where did this data come from? Where does it mean? Uh, I mean, I see questions on Stack Overflow where people are asking, it's like, how do you know what that data means, you know? Um, zones are better than offsets. When you can have a zone, you always want America slash Montreal is so much better than minus five. Because minus five, again, if you add or subtract, you don't know if were they talking Venezuela, uh, you know, Brazil might have the same, who knows? So a zone is the history in that region of all the offsets, past, present, and future. Now the future is kind of rough, right? Because we know it could change. But right, the current daylight savings time plan is what will be used in the future, uh, projected out by your, by your app software. Um, the fractional second, another way people go wrong again because if they don't, they have mismatches. When they get the data out or put it in, fractional second's different. But they're looking, often these tools uh, suppress the display of the fractional second. So there's questions on, on Stack Overflow and going, looking, oh, look, it's 9 a.m. and 9 a.m. and it says they're not the same. Well, because there's a fractional second that's different. Um, you know, one got truncated in milliseconds, the other one's got nanoseconds. Um, Strings we talked a lot about. Oh, there are geeks that will tell you, forget all this date time stuff, just do a number. Just keep that number that count from the epic. I think it's really bad advice. 
For one thing, what epic we talked about, you don't know which epic uh, it means. You, know, you just see one and a half billion, blah, blah, blah. What does that mean? Well, did they mean the, the Unix time frame? I don't know. Um, what is that number? Is it millions or billions? Now I can figure out, is it milliseconds or is it whole seconds? Or is it some other? I've seen all kinds of numbers used for the granularity. Um, the other problem, the biggest problem though to me is uh, you can't read it. When you're debugging as a programmer or DBA and you're a tester and you're looking at one and a half billion, I happen to know one and a half billion is right about now. The, we flipped over to 1.5 1, 1 billion, whatever, milliseconds I think since 1970. But other than that, you can't really tell if that value is valid. If you see that 2008 instead of 2018, you know, oh, we got, something went wrong with data entry. Um, but like I said, there's geeks who will suggest that. I think it's bad, bad advice. Postgres is unusually good at daytime handling. It's, I think, one of the bigger sleeper features that, that would shoot, make someone choose Postgres. But the caveat is you really need to understand the docs and understand how it works and understand that other databases are so radically different. There are some databases that do save the time zone in the time zone with the time zone. At least one, I think, I've heard of. Um, most of them generally adjust into UTC like um, Postgres do. But there's other things, like SQLite has no types at all. They have pretend types for daytime that aren't really at all. Um, um, MySQL, I think, has some screwy types, although I'm being recorded. Can say that, but I think um, I've had some real confusion trying to help people with my SQL and Stack Overflow. And that's about it. Um, I'd like to do another talk someday about make another date with Postgres because we haven't talked really about there are a lot of functions, there's a lot of tricks and techniques you can use in the uh, SQL and PGL SQL. But this today, I hope what I gave you was the basic concepts to guide you in understanding the data types. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you.